football practice is right around the corner. Uh, Caleb, Tennessee's defensive line in a preview by Josh Ward, it is online, should be very, very good. How good do you think they can be stacked up to other NCAA, other SEC teams, I should say? Tennessee could be defensive line you for college football once again very, very soon. Now, it's not going to be defensive line you the way it was under Tron Chavis because when they were defensive line you back then, as you know, Dave, the focus was the defensive tackles and those really big guys that could kind of, you know, that the, the focus was stopping the run with the defensive line. Is that fair to say? Yes. In the Chavis years? Yes. That, yes. This team is more about being serviceable and stopping the run but unleashing the hell of a pass rush. And that's what this team is going to be designed to do. So looking at the defensive line, and we can just start with the defensive tackles. I mean, the defensive tackles are there to be serviceable and do their jobs, but not leap off your screen. That's kind of the way Tim Binks kind of designs the defense because they want to play off Heupel's, what, what Josh Heupel does offensively. So Bryson Eason, Amari Thomas, Omar Norman Lott are the guys you're going to be happy with with how they play in the middle. The potential leap off your screen guy, as you keep talking about, Dave, is Elijah Simmons. If he becomes a leap off your screen guy, you all of a sudden change the defensive tackle situation from serviceable to very, very, very deadly, right? Maybe maybe elite. I don't think that's too far of a stretch. I agree. That's not too far of a stretch at all. So that's the real big one. And then there are a couple of hybrid guys, um, mostly that that you want that can line up in the middle or on the edge. And we're talking Dominic Bailey, Tyree West, David Hobbs, those are, and Nathan Robinson. Those are kind of the main ones that should be able to do that. And don't forget Jason Jenkins is still on the team too. So those that's a focus. But right now, the star part of the defense is, as we know, the edge rushers. Because Tennessee has James Pierce, who I think you and I both agree is going to be the best edge rusher in college football this year. All-American, probably. Can I ask you a quick question, not to get you sidetracked? But I would have said 10 years ago that defensive tackle is more important than the defensive end, despite what pass rushers can do with strip sacks. 10 years ago, I would have said I'd rather have an elite defensive tackle than an elite edge rusher. I've changed in that. I've flipped. Have you flipped? Were you ever that way in the first place? I think it's very dependent on how your team is built um, okay. because I, okay. Put it this way. When, when, when the Colts had Peyton Manning, edge rushers were more important. Dwight Freeney, Robert Mathis. Remember it was Peyton Manning, get us a lead. Dwight Freeney, Robert Mathis. We can unleash them now when the other team has to pass all the time. It's exactly how this team is built. That's exactly how this team is built. Yes. But then there's still the Rams a couple of years ago when they had Aaron Donald. And let's be honest, you're not trading Aaron Donald for anybody in the NFL. Are you, if you have him on defense? <clears throat> All right, well, let me let me make it a little more relatable to our listeners. Would you rather have James Pierce or John Henderson in this defense? Oh, this defense. That's actually one of the best questions you've ever asked because that is a really <laughs> good question. That's an amazing question, Dave. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Before you answer why you have time to think, let me tell everybody it's brought to you by Sports Treasures. I was there over the weekend, picked up an awesome piece of Steelers memorabilia for a friend of mine who was celebrating a birthday. They've got over 5 million sports treasures and so much more. Follow on Facebook for the best sports memorabilia. They have daily updates. Uh, sports Treasures TN on Facebook. Sports Treasures TN. Absolutely love them. So. Are you taking John Henderson or are you taking James Pierce for this defensive line? I'm still taking John Henderson right now. I, I, and, and Dave, you're talking about, I mean, I'm just going to say it and you guys can call me crazy because there's Reggie White and Doug Atkins played in, uh, in the middle. Steve DeLong from the 1950s or 1960s, the first Outland Trophy winner from Tennessee. John Henderson is the greatest Tennessee defensive tackle ever. Okay. I mean, Can yes, you, Albert Hainsworth. If he's, Albert Hainsworth had more talent. From, yeah, from the neck up, if Albert Hainsworth's okay. I mean, it was close. It was closer than I think you sometimes remember. Well, yes, but remember in 2000, Albert Hainsworth hadn't arrived yet, and John Henderson still won the Outland Trophy without any help from Albert Hainsworth. And there are a couple of players. Um, 
on the defensive ends those years that put up James Pierce numbers. One more number 90, and his name rhymed, his first name rhymes with Mill. Um that put up James Pierce numbers because he played played next to John Henderson. Is that fair to say, Dave? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um in Mill this defense, Overstreet. <laughs> yes. Will Overstreet. Uh bit in this defense, I'm I'm taking Pierce. I'm I'm taking Pierce. I have to pick between Pierce and Henderson. Now, I know that sounds like pure heresy, but a strip sack, one strip sack can can really end your chances of beating this Tennessee football team if Nico is half the player that I believe he'll be, and this offense is half as good as I believe it will be. I mean, the bottom line is if you if you turn the ball over via a strip sack and you have in your Tennessee and you've got one more possession, that's probably going to be a touchdown or a field goal. And and it doesn't just have to be a strip sack. How many times do we see a pressure on a second or third down put you behind the chains in a long down and distance? That happens a lot. So I think it's James Pierce. I feel like a bad person for even saying that. <laughs> Colton says crazy Caleb's takes rubbing off on Dave. Uh, and he also, by the way, I don't know how many people watch this, but Stand on business, Josh, is going to be a thing. Uh, for, for the record, if you didn't see the short, check it out. Please subscribe to the channel for more goofiness, as Caleb made me look like a goofball, and I laughed all weekend over it. <laughs> Am I a bad football person for saying that I would take the edge rusher over the tackle? I feel naughty. It depends on the system and the player. That's where I met. Oh, like, in this case, that I would take Pierce over Henderson. No, I feel but, naughty. But I Dave, feel like you have all. You know what? Since we started this show, you've disrespected John Henderson. Because, and I feel <laughs> like I'm going to say this. I feel like there is a resurgence. I feel like there is a forgetfulness of John Henderson. And I'm just going to give you guys an example. This is at my old place. Um, I was asked to do a Mount Rushmore of Tennessee players for the last 30, 40 years. And I was asked to name. I was told that Peyton Manning and Reggie White have to be locks. Which okay, they have to be locks. I wanted to do. I did Al Wilson as my third. And then like, I, I was very tied between John Henderson and Eric Berry as my fourth. Everybody came to me and was like, well, Eric Berry, obviously Eric Berry, obviously, obviously Eric Berry over John Henderson. And in my mind, I'm like, and then I saw last year, there was a campaign to retire Eric Berry's number, which there shouldn't be. He shouldn't get his number retired as much as I love him because he didn't finish at Tennessee, which is fine, but no campaign to retire John Henderson's number. And I'm thinking in my mind, where is this idea that Eric Berry was so much more accomplished for Tennessee than John Henderson was? Uh, well, he was a consensus All-American, wouldn't you? I mean, I'd so say was John Henderson. Both were two-time All-Americans who won the award for the best player at their position. Were they both unanimous or consensus? I don't want to get caught up in the minutia. They were both elite players. To me, I would take Berry because of his versatility, but it's very, very close. I and I'll, I say that, and I almost go backwards. And I would no, I think I would take the defensive tackle. Okay, but actually, okay, you would take Barry over Henderson as a player. No, but in terms of a, I'm ta- no, I'm taking that back. I would take. Henderson. Okay, fine. But also in terms of a greater legend, I don't like Barry getting treated as a greater legend because. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this. Barry left after his junior year. John Henderson decided to come back for his senior year when he didn't have to. That has to matter for something. Caleb, and do you mind notice that Caleb just gave me an all whatever type of thing? <laughs> Oh, whatever you think, Dave. No, it was. Uh, I'm trying to say close. that. Like, I, I'm saying that, that if I told you you're starting a college program, you have to admit it's close between Barry and Henderson. I'm not sure how we got so far off topic, but you have to admit well, it's close. I'm even considering taking Barry over Henderson, but that's not the question. The question is who's a greater legend for Tennessee? And okay. Henderson stayed till his senior year. Well, that's not the question. The question is, the question would you is take who James you're taking. Spears? <laughs> we've completely butchered. We've taken the question out back and beat it with a stick is what we've done. But getting back to the point, you would take John Henderson over James Pierce in this defense, correct? Yes. There's okay, now, layer. Wait, wait, a, wait a second. Wait a second. Play this, play this game with me. It, now, I'm just talking about one season. I'm not talking about whether he stayed or not. I don't care about all that. Eric Berry should have left, and we all know it. He didn't do anything wrong. Would you take Albert Hainsworth for one season over James Pierce? No, and that's where I was going with next, and I will tell you why. 
Okay, wait it's a, a second. Game. Wait a okay. second. All right. Not All done. right. Would you take Jesse Mahalona over James Pierce in this system? A light defensive tackle, kind of like the guy you just mentioned, Mr. Donald. There's a similarity there. Yeah, in terms of fit for the defense, Jesse Mahalona is perfect for this defense. Honestly. I know. I would take great. I, I love Travis, man. I would take Jesse Mahalona over James Pierce in this defense. Am I insane? No, I kind of agree with you. Jesse Mahalona, specifically, you have a point. Um, there, there's something else we have to throw in here. This is why I said I take Pierce over Hainsworth. Let's talk about head cases for a minute. And look, I'm not trying to throw Pierce under the bus, but he did have a legal issue in December. Yes. Dave, let's be honest. Now, yes, John Henderson didn't qualify academically in 98, but from everything I've read, once he qualified, he became a very stand-up, disciplined citizen, right? Like a very yeah. good guy. No doubt. Um, like if 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 you wanted an intimidating 6'7 guy marrying your daughter, John Henderson's the guy, right? And she's allowed uh, to slap him across the face like in those Jaguars pregame videos. Yes. Exactly. And but Henderson knew when to turn it off and when to turn it on, unlike Hainsworth, who didn't who couldn't really figure out that line. Hainsworth had mental issues. James Pierce has already gotten in trouble in a way that Henderson never did. Henderson had an academic issue, but never got in trouble. And Mahalona was about a stand-up of a guy as you could ask for as in a human, right? And mm -hmm. so I think that matters too. We have to question if James Pierce is going to do something stupid that keeps him from playing now and never had that question about john henderson once he got on the field um so that's why i'm yeah i take mahalona and henderson over i take mahalona because of the fit for the defense henderson because he's just amazing over pierce but i would take pierce over hainsworth because yeah you, you don't well, know what you're gonna get hindsight's 2020 but if i knew with hainsworth that i could motivate him by telling him to get angry like dodgeball, which is essentially what Jeff Fisher did, then I would go Hainsworth over Henderson for this defense. I know that's insane.